Yeah, my, my work takes place in a lot of different contexts, uh, depending on, on what the work is. Um, sometimes it takes place in science museums, sometimes it takes place in art galleries. A lot of times it's distributed by media on the web or in video form. Um, but the work that I've been doing recently with this salon that I, I've started called Critter often takes place in a lot of, a lot of different contexts. And sometimes that's out of storefronts or in kitchens or in a person's home. Um, and each, each one of these things lets me reach a, a different kind of audience. And I think for me, I, I, try, I try to stay fluid uh, with, with how, I, how I imagine that. And I, I, don't, I don't really know always the, the way that it, that it takes place. Um, a lot of it has to do with how easily I feel I can reach my audience, as well as the type of support that I, I think I, I actually need. Um, to, to get those things done. So if I'm doing something very complicated uh, that requires a lot of technical assistance, at that point I might pair with an institution and be able to use uh, some of the administrative possibilities, the technology, um, the, the, the lists or the access or even the, the, the charge of the name uh, to attract people to, to those situations. Uh, the qualities of art to address an ecological crisis. <laughs> I don't, you know, like, um, I, I, I don't know that I think so overtly about um, ecological crisis. Uh, it, it certainly is in the back of my mind just because it's in the news, it's something I think about. Um, and uh, I think that art, art is a great way to attract people to thinking about something without without making them feel guilty about the way that they're leading their lives, without um, making people scared uh, of, of what they're doing, and to open up types of education that they might not necessarily want to receive. Um, so I, I use art, um, in, again, like in, in the form of critter, as a way of um, what, what I call um, uh, well, pull, pulling people in. Um, so that I'll make something that seems very entertaining or interesting, um, which might take the form of um, a screening or a contest or of something uh, like, like a dance. And then the information is often there so that people can go to a, a deeper level and they can do the searches themselves for, for what they're actually looking for but without telling them or being so didactic in how, how I imagine I would solve any type of problem because I, I just find myself like I'm very resistant to hearing what's supposed to be my best, my best practice. And I feel that until people have, have come to these things themselves, um, that they're, they're really not going to participate in any type of larger activity. I don't think it's not even so much a matter of choice, like my formal, I, I have formal education in, in art, like that was my, my undergraduate and graduate degree were, were in things like art, and I, I, I don't really know so much about science, so it's been my own personal way of, of learning about things, which is often an attraction to something that looks really interesting or is something that I don't know so much about, and often coming from an aesthetic, an aesthetic place. And, and so it will, it will start with, uh, with the artwork, or just thinking about how, how, we, how we think about the way the world looks. Um, for instance, the, the project that I've been working on for about 15 years now that involves uh, fungus, it, it, was, it was looking at the way that, that mushrooms grow out in the wild, often drawing them as a way of understanding them because it, it brings you into a very close observation of, of what you're looking at. And then also looking at the ways that mushrooms are then portrayed to people outside of the typical photograph. And often this comes from other, other cultural aesthetics, uh, particularly Asian aesthetics having to do with um, uh, what's called the Penjing tradition. And looking at things that are often um, considered ugly or grotesque or difficult to comprehend, which is I think where we're in a similar situation with our, our, our greater relationship to the environment. We don't really understand it. Um, it, it seems complex or scary, uh, and to reframe how we look at it is often a, a very big way of entering into, a, a, again, a, a, deeper, a deeper understanding of, of how we might even think about the problems that we're facing. So something that originally looks terrible or grotesque might suddenly become actually beautiful, 
and seeing it as a, a deeper a deeper way to to, to understand a, a grander relationship between an organism, the environment that it's grown in, the way that people behave with those organisms as well. Um, a project that I'm currently working on is um, making some videos about microorganisms, uh, and so I worked in a in a a human physiology lab in Australia for about four months. Applying the art of cinematography through a microscope to a world that isn't often treated as if it's a, a, a theater to look at. So um, quite often scientists will look for evidence or an, an answer or uh, information about a very specific type of problem and not necessarily looking at the aesthetic potential in that. And so the video that I've made is showing uh, something that often looks kind of grotesque. It's a, it's a slime mold, and, and the best way to describe it in its macroscopic form is it looks like a cat threw up on something. And so most people don't want to take a closer look at it, but when you give it the proper lighting and you're looking at it from a microscopic point of view, it becomes the most beautiful thing in the world. And so that I think then people might consider this organism in a very different way when they can actually see its life cycle, some of its behaviors in relationship to acquiring food or trying to avoid danger or looking for water or, or again like anything that other other people might relate to. And so there's almost a, a physical type of response that people have that's that's not just grotesque but um, but it might be um, uh, I, I don't know it's not it's not um uh, what's, what's the word? Um, uh, uh, appreciation, but it's like there's like you can see a body and the way that the body is behaving, and you have a body, and you know that your own body behaves in, in response to its environment. So there's some type of mirroring of identification with that. And again, I don't think that that's what scientists are really trying to show in their work, but I think that looking at it from the, the theatrical or aesthetic standpoint, that people might might want to know more about why this, this organism is behaving this way. Uh, blown my mind is um, sometimes seeing seeing something in the world, uh, not not the first, but uh, the way that um, it, it can unlock an understanding of things that that you felt were intractable or, or could not even be entered into. And so, um, when you're persistent with your with your discovery process, it will often reveal a lot of things uh, that you you never knew you were. Experience before, and so that that constantly blows my mind. Um, the case with the slime mold, I saw a type of behavior where um, you have trillions of nuclei in an organism all starting to behave in concert, and the phenomena that you see in this, I felt it was like looking at the face of God, and I, you know, it's like looking through a microscope and seeing the face of God. I'm not a, a, a particularly religious or spiritual person, but I couldn't believe what I was seeing, and. I just, you know, I wanted to ask this thing questions. And I, I was like, how do you ask questions of a microorganism? Or how, you know, like, the, I, I, I wanted to know this more. Like, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing.